Madam Speaker, there's just so much we can discuss here as we dive into the contents of Bill C-56. I'm often thinking about the price of housing when we look at this. And I, I remember when I first got out, got out of law school, Madam Speaker, my wife and I were saddled with, back then, what seemed like insurmountable loans, probably about $100,000. And we thought, how are we going to make it? And there's this perception among some people that the moment you become a lawyer, you make a, a ton of money, and that just wasn't the case. Uh, it's still not the case. And I remember being stretched very thin to buy our first home. We had to balance that with a car payment because our, our cars were on their last legs. And here we bought a house for, I believe it was about $350,000. And we were thinking to ourselves, how are we going to make it through? This is not going to be easy. That same house today would sell for $700,000 with the lion's share of the increase of that house falling during the past eight years of this Liberal government and more recently this Liberal NDP government. Housing has been an unmitigated failure when it comes to this government. What I see in my area of Kamloops, Thompson, Caribou is a lack of investment in infrastructure. This Liberal government, we've learned, they talk a wonderful game. We've got wonderful places, though, in my riding, beautiful areas in Kamloops, Thompson, Caribou, that simply don't have the infrastructure to build. One of the things that I'm trying to do uh, in the North Thompson, in my riding, is to bring natural gas and high-speed internet. There are, there are companies that would love to expand, especially in the industrial area, and they don't have the places to build or the places to manufacture, and if only they had natural gas, could they actually come and build factory or manufacturing operations? We don't see the government doing any of that. None of that. They want to focus where they think they're going to get votes. And that's not what a government is supposed to be. You're either a government to all or a government to nobody. This is precisely why they had their car vote that we just learned about a couple weeks ago was because, hey, the Atlantic provinces, they voted enough liberals to be at the table. If only we had voted enough liberals. Perhaps if I was a liberal, there would be natural gas being funded to those areas. There would be more natural gas, more high-speed internet. People should not be punished because they don't vote liberal. And this government, unfortunately, has been a government to a few. And now, to top it off, they're refusing to give the same carve-out to people, like in my riding, who heat their houses on propane. Propane is incredibly expensive. They don't have the option for natural gas and yet they're still paying a punishing carbon tax and this government doesn't seem to care. Madam Speaker, this is a key issue because the infrastructure is just not there and housing is at a critical threshold. If we listen to the housing minister, Madam Speaker, there's something that he repeatedly says, and there's something that the Prime Minister repeatedly says. If you listen to them when they speak about housing, this is what they frequently say. We're going to. We're gonna. We've just announced. We're partnering with. Do you know what you don't hear, Madam Speaker, at all? We have done. We've completed. You never hear that unless it's something about the future. We've completed an agreement to do something. We are going to do this. Why is it, Madam Speaker, that we don't see results? We saw a cabinet shuffle, and it was obvious, Madam Speaker, that this government came out of the summer break, they looked at the polls, and they said, oh boy, housing's a big issue. We got to start getting out those photo ops, because this is a government that doesn't govern based on what's good for the people. It governs based on what message it thinks the people want to hear. I referenced a question earlier. This government is so quick to get there for photo ops. Any natural disaster, they are there. But when it comes down to it, what about after a natural disaster when there needs to be rebuilding? What about when we're dealing with displaced people? Where is this government then? Nobody's around for photo ops. 
And that's emblematic of how this government deals with things. We don't need photo ops. We need actual results. And then complicating matters, Madam Speaker, when it comes to housing, is the fact that we have mortgage rates that are substantially higher. The Prime Minister told a reporter years ago, I believe he said, Glenn, mortgage rates are at an all-time low. Borrow as you see fit. Borrow, borrow, borrow. And people did. Why? Because they listened to their leaders. So they borrowed and borrowed. And like me, perhaps their mortgage is coming due. My mortgage is due in 2024. I was recently doing the calculations and I thought to myself, geez, I'm going to pay just under $1,000 more for my mortgage. I'm going to have to write that into a budget. Now, there are a lot of people, though, who don't have the fortune I do to be able to absorb that. That's incredibly problematic. And yet, day after day, with interest rates that have skyrocketed, perhaps not as high as we had them historically, but we didn't have mortgage rates, or pardon me, housing prices that were this high historically. And yet, when it comes to a confidence motion, the NDP, they vote time and time again to support this government. If you listen in question period, you would think that they were diametrically opposed to this government when it comes to housing. And yet, when the time comes to either close debate or to vote against the government, they will always stand with the government. This is utterly perplexing, Madam Speaker. I don't understand how a party that is so focused, we had heard my colleague speak with great passion before me from Coquitlam, poor Coquitlam, about, about helping the poor. And what do we see? We see 10 cities and how bad the Liberals have failed. And yet, when it comes down to a confidence measure next time, they will stand up and support this government. If they want to get things done, they should stop supporting this government. Then we may see things actually change, Madam Speaker. I know I'm running low on time, Madam Speaker, but at the end of the day, I think people are tired of seeing tent cities. I've seen tent cities just proliferate in my riding and throughout Canada. That's not good for anybody. Now, Madam Speaker, in closing, I want to recognize one final person, and that's Thomas McNulty Sr. Um, I read that he uh, recently passed away. Uh, I went to school with his, uh, with his granddaughter. Uh, the family has, uh, has um, played a significant role in the community of Kamloops, within Kamloops, Thompson Caribou. Uh, my deepest condolences go to his family, and may perpetual light shine upon him. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires? Resuming debate, uh, the Honourable uh, uh, the Honourable Member for Brandon Souris. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to ask my colleague a question in regards to, um, you know, just the uh, the issues of housing that he was talking about, and uh, uh, the fact that uh, there are so many uh, areas of the country that still need uh, tremendous uh, affordable housing and if he could elaborate more on the kind of uh, issues that our leader of the Conservative Party, member from Carleton, is talking about. The Honourable Member for Kamloops, Brand, uh, Kamloops Thompson's uh, carry group. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I thank my, uh, my colleague from Brandis, Brandon Suris. It's always so great to hear him. It feels as though I uh, should be listening to uh, some sort of radio program with him on it because he's got such a, a great joy voice. Uh, you know, when, one of the things that I admire about the, the, about the leader from the Conservative Party um, is that he, he, he's not afraid to, to tell us what he believes in. And one of the things that I think is, is quite appropriate is that he says to municipalities and has said to municipalities, if you get the job done, you will get more money. It's kind of like uh, saying there will be a reward. One thing that we see with this NDP Liberal government is that the NDP will say, well, even if you don't get things done, we'll still support you. The leader of the Conservatives is saying, no, if you're not going to get things done, you're not going to get your fat bonuses and you're not going to get the money. You get things done, you'll get even more money, and I believe that's the right way to go. Uh